Auto Pros on the Road is sponsored by Fram, manufacturers of high quality filters since 1934. Visit Fram.com to learn more. Auto Pros on the road, how are you? Good, pleased Josh, to meet you. Josh, nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Thanks for having us out here today no and uh, be able to take no a look at your shop. No problem. Wow. You don't see too much like this. It's it's a dying breed. It you is. Know, sadly, it is a dying breed. It's great, right? I love it. This is a speed shop that I went into when I was a kid. Yeah. Down to handwritten receipts. <laughs> oh, it drives I love my it. accountant in the sink. Speed it, shop when I was a kid, there wasn't no computer. And catalog rack. As soon as I saw that, I mean, I recognized it, the tabs, the whole nine yards. And you, yeah. I worked for super shops from the summer I got out of high school. That's out of one of the super shop stores. That's great. Wow. You just don't see a lot of them yeah. using it anymore. You no, know, that was a Mr. That's a Mr. Gasket catalog rack, but all that was as industry standard back then. And my cash drawer <laughs> came out of the one here in town. I learned how to do this by working for super shops. Yeah. You know, I had the opportunity to start my own place and leave about six, eight months before they went belly up. It was the best decision I ever made. I'd worked there for a long time. They'd moved me all over the country. I'd managed several stores. I, I'm not from Louisville originally, but I grew up here. The Louisville Super Shop store was a really good store. And I was based in Indianapolis, and the longtime manager quit. Okay. And they moved me back to take over the store, because busier store you were in, Better you did. Better you did. Absolutely. You know, the yeah, Louisville yeah. store was always a top five store, you know. Yeah. The indie store was usually a 10 to 15 store, so it was a, there wasn't a lot of step ups from where yeah. I was at, but it was a step up and it was coming home. When I opened, I opened diagonally across the street from Super Shops. Oh, that's great. <laughs> they were the biggest retailer of all this stuff yep, sure. in the entire world. And I opened across the street from them. And he's like, we're going to crush you, we're going to this, we're going to that. And I was part of the Super Shop's steamroller yeah. for years. And I was like, I hope you don't do that. And I was like, I want to be the little moray swimming beside the big shark. Yeah. The store down the street stocked every double pumper that Holly made. Every performer intake that Elder Brock offered. Cams yeah. for every yeah. domestic V8 engine. Well, we'd have 30 double pumper carburetors in stock. You had no chrome dual line. And I was like, I'm going to sell dual lines. I'm going to do what Super Shops can't do well. I want to swim along beside you. And, you know, he's like, we're going to crush you, we're going to crush you. Well, then six, eight months later, down the drain they went. Wow. And made a cold call on me a couple years later. How about you crushing me? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, it seems like I'm going to still end up with a job. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, you know, starting my own business. It was a dream. You know, I always wanted my own speed shop. The customers have become more than customers. They've become buddies yep. and friends and very, very good friends. And when people walk through my door, no matter what they do on the other side of that door, when they come in here, they're just car guys. And right. the dynamic is really cool because you see these guys that would never speak to each other, never interact, until they're here. You, you got know, the, the Mopar the guys picture. talking with the yeah, Ford guys. Well, yeah, well, the picture's Jeez. on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's customers' yeah. cars. A lot of the cars were mine, but, you know, it's customers' cars, and, you know, and guys come in, and, you know, it's just... It's a tavern without a beer tap. Thanks. I get enough trouble without drinking. So, you know, I'm not... Speaking of car guys, we'd like a tour. Sure. Absolutely. Obviously, we have parts. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. just yeah. seeing parts, this, I mean, stuff. it is amazing. Yes. I'm very heavy into the AN fittings. You know, every car has to have AN fittings nowadays. Yep. And it's, I'm really proud of our AN fitting selection that we keep. You really have to have something dumb that we can't plumb. It started out if everything was red and blue, and then yep. black came onto the market, and yep. it's like, oh my God, now I gotta have twice this stuff. But you know, we <laughs> sell a ton of that stuff. But we can kind of roll through this yeah, way. Sure. Sounds good. Our passion for protecting vehicles started in 1934, and we've been pushing the limits of performance ever since. We innovate with the times and have the right filters to fit your needs. Fram for the road ahead. This is our engine room. This is Greg Mattingly. He does a lot of our engine assembly. Joe, nice to meet you. Well, I'm Josh. Nice to meet well, you. We've kind of changed our dynamic. At one point, I had full machine shop in-house. 
I had really old equipment. It's just not cost effective to do it with old equipment. Makes sense. Yeah. I got into a bind with a fellow in from out of town for the Street Ride Nationals. Well, he blew his motor up on his way here from Phoenix. Had to get back to Phoenix. And I called a buddy of mine that I knew had a brand new machining center. And I said, man, I just need to do a block. From the time he pushed the green button until he pushed the red button, it was 90 minutes. And I was like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. You know, and yeah. so I don't, you know, we still keep a valve grinder that we rarely use. But yeah. I've got a really good relationship with a couple of local machine shops. They do the machine work for us. We still do the assembly. I pick all the parts. It works out well. You know, we've got an AMC motor there. Oh, which one? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. 390. It is. Um, nice. 455 Olds under the bag, 440 Chrysler back there. Okay, all right. We'll do a, you know, you do a lot of Chevrolet stuff because that's what the market bears. We don't do much LS stuff. I'm the old guy in the 60s, that, the trusty old guy in the 60s that was building flatheads that said all oh, those small box Chevys will never take off. You know, that's me. It's, you know, my customer base doesn't demand that I'm LS knowledgeable. They're wonderful engines, but I know that much about them. And there's definitely been a little resurgence over the past couple of years on these classic cars coming back and people wanting to you know, get these barn finds and rebuild them and, and bring them back to there's life. There's so much work and there's, if you're gonna be into that world, you have to be a keyboard tuner. You really need a chassis dyno if you're gonna do that. Buy me an engine dyno, I'd love to have one of those. And that's kind of, you know, that that's on the, the bucket list dream list as an engine dyno. All right. Because there's so many things that we, we like to play with, but our dyno time's limited because we do it out of, Makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. The, the place where we do it, they are wonderful to us. You know, it's not uncommon for to go down there and make 10, 12 pulls. Nice. You know, and other places when it's a carry-in motor, they're like, yep, out, you know, pay me and leave. Yeah. But, you know, we've got a wonderful relationship with it. They take care of our motors. It's Dale Mears Racing Engines. And they take care of our engines that we drag down there to dyno like they built them themselves in the house. That's, that's great. Yeah, that's and good. And it's a really neat deal. All but right. Engine room. This is kind of the teardown area for the engine room, as you can tell. Oh, um, yeah. And what yeah. do we got here? What are we looking 548 at? 548 cubic inch big block Chevrolet, um, blown alcohol, 1471 blower. So we race for decent money. And That's everybody great. has fun. It's I race pro mod cars. I raced alcohol funny car for several years. You know, it's just Go fun, race, it. fun yeah. racing oh, yeah. with fast cars. That's yeah. great. It's, it's just, a, it's such a great community. Yeah. You know, another Ford, you know, that's, that's a customer's motor. We've... He got a little greedy on his tune-up. It's a Vortex Supercharged 363. Makes good power. Made almost a thousand at the wheels. Wow. There's my latest boo-boo. Boo -boo. Whoa. It's impressive damage even by my standards. Wow. We pushed the gasket. Got into the water jacket. Wow. Burnt into the port. Wow. On both sides. Wow. And that's, you know, that's wow. blown alcohol stuff. Yeah. But this was a new one for me. Burnt through into the top. Whoa. So I, I lit it up under the valve cover too. So, you know, that was, that, you know, that was, that was new for me. You know, I uh, torch your head pretty good, but I burnt up four rocker. That's, that's yeah, literally. Yeah. Yeah, that's the end of the race. But this is an AMC Rebel. Um, oh, oh, yes, it is. It is going to be kind of a mild pro touring build. The AMC motor on the stand in there is for it. Okay. Um, going to be a neat piece. Yeah. It's cross ram. Two haul or two um, fast, easy fuel injectors on it. Um, gonna end up with vintage air, you know, modern yeah, wiring, nice. so forth. But very traditional looking. Was it um, original V8 car, or yeah, did you have to? It was to original V8 members? car. No, it was no, original V8 yeah. car. The Chevelle on the '66 Chevelle on the lift. It's obviously in for a little minor redo. Yeah, I was about to say. So we've got the whole front of the frame cut off. What are, what are we doing there? We're doing struts. Um, it's gonna we're gonna put a strut front end on it. Okay. The it's pro street car. It's 496, um, 871 blower, was carbureted. We're going to put an Enderley injector on it. We're going to go okay. E85. I think we build as nice of a mild steel car as anybody you're going to get to. The 65 Chevelle, kind of a pretty typical of the project stuff we get into. Um, did an engine for it, a little aluminum headed small block, hydraulic roller, vintage air. Um, it's going to end up with a cold case radiator and fans. It's got a decoded digital VHX with the. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, we did all the suspension. It's got tubular control arms, top and bottom, front and back. Um, did a gear and a posi. You know, basically all of the mechanical in the car will be new and different 
Um, Great. And a neat looking car. You know, yeah. it's got a modern retro wheel on it. Um, fairly big, but not mm -hmm. obnoxious. You know, just going to be a neat car when it's done. Absolutely. The Oldsmobile, same kind of deal. This one, the first one of those we've dealt with. Um, you know, if you're familiar, it replaced the TKOs. The TKOs are such yep. a bad retrofit. You know, into an early A body car like this, you've got to cut the entire tunnel out of them, raise it yep. about two to three inches. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed to fit significantly better, so we will see. Um, getting a Moser 12 bolt. Um, nice. Bunch of, you know, just bunch of stuff. Yep. You know, but the, the big it's deal is, the big deal is, you know, automatic stick. This is kind of, you know, kind of the back room. The. Oh, more toys. More toys. Yeah. Lots of toys. Uh, somebody here has a Corvette problem. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it no. wouldn't be you, would it? Nah, no. I'm down to six. <laughs> <laughs> None of them are particularly valuable, though. You know, like my buddies give me a hard time, and they're, you know, I've got, I've got a 64, so that's a reason. And as far as mid-years go, it's not real nice. It's cool. Right. But, you know, it's a put-together car, and it's... Do you enjoy it? Oh, I love it. There you go. That's you all know, that matters. It's, it's radius it. wheel well. It's got slots on it. You know, it's, yeah. it's a small box stick car. Uh, you know, had it not been raining, I'd have probably drove it today. Nice. But the... The rest of them, I've got C3s, I've got a C4, I've got a C5, and I've got one buddy that really was thrashing me about having all these Corvettes, and he's got a beautiful 70 Super Sport Chevelle. But Chevelle costs about the same as all six of my Corvettes. <laughs> I was like, I don't have six Corvettes and one Chevelle. Yeah. And, you know, I've had yeah. a bunch of those. But the Velari, that is going to be a neat car. That is a Velari Super Coupe. Ooh. It's actually going to end up semi-pro touring. We've got 12-inch wheel woods. Do a lot of wheelwood brakes on almost everything. Yeah. Back there, a couple of our race cars. The car on wow. top, the Trans Am, was my first real race car. Wow. I've owned this car four times. It's like an old pair of chucks. You yeah. know, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's a good car. You know, it evolved from a, you know, when I had it the first time, I had a blown small block in it to a blown big block. It's got an injected big block in it now, just bracket car. It's a wonderfully good bracket car. The Buick is kind of a neat piece. That belongs to Mitch. Um, it's got a 505 cubic inch big block Chevrolet in it. We sprayed a little bit. Um, run index class stuff with it, a little bit of non-delay bracket stuff. Car, you know, of course, we eighth mile race only. Um, run six O's on the motor. Wow. We spray it and run the 570 index class. And it's a fun car. It's, it's a ladder bar car, so it does big dumb wheelies. Our passion for protecting vehicles started in 1934, and we've been pushing the limits of performance ever since. We innovate with the times and have the right filters to fit your needs. Fram for the road ahead. So Drew, I definitely want to thank you for allowing us to come in and, and, and pick your brain a little bit and take a look around. And again, the idea of our show on uh, Auto Pros on the Road was I'm looking for unique. I'm looking for different. You know, I don't travel all the way from Akron just to, to look for boring and mundane. We're looking for the things that you just don't find in the automotive sure. world anymore. Sure. And a shop like this, not a lot of these exist anymore. Unfortunately not. I mean, it's just a, it's a dying breed and it's a shame. The, you know, the independent speed shops, you know, they're just going away and I'm very fortunate that my customers are very good to me and, you know, they enjoy coming down. They, they understand how important it is to have a Drew in their town. And I've got folks that live in other parts of the country that they don't have a street and strip there. And, you know, the mail order and uh, Amazon and all that is great. Till you need something on Saturday afternoon so you can go to the racetrack or so you can go to the ride run. You know, when you need that bowl gasket, that because they didn't support their street and strip, he's no longer there. Yeah. And now they're stuck waiting several days to get their part. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just blessed to be able to do something I love and to continue this. And again, like you were saying, you know, it's one thing to, to mail order a part, but it's another thing when you need it right now, you yeah. know where to get it. And again, when it's racing, it's not exactly the easiest thing to find no. sometimes. So you've got to go to a feed shop to get yeah. that. Um, and you're also involved in racing too. So, I mean, you're racing your own yep. thing. So you're, you got the business, but you're also 
racing as well. Tell me a little bit about, about your well, racing. Well, I've drag raced the majority of my life. You know, like everybody else, I started out with my high school car. And Which was a? 68 Dodge Charger was my very first uh, car. Uh, uh, I love I, you. I, I'd like to say I'm not super sentimental and geeky about saving stuff, but then I kind of look around and think, man, I am. <laughs> I have my first time slip, and it was a blazing 1077 in the 8th. And when I was in high school, it was the third fastest car in the parking lot. And that That's tells great. you how slow cars were back then. Yeah. You know, because they knew V6 Camaro will suck the paint off that. You know, they'll run <laughs> nine O's. Yeah, yeah. And the, you know, I know it was the third fastest car because we tested them almost every day. And I worked my way up from that really slow street car from the 10s to the 9s to the 8s to the 7s to the 6s to the 5s to the 4s to the 3s. And I tell people all the time, I was just as excited the first time I went in the 9s as the first time I went in the 3s. Because it was just as big of an accomplishment for me then as it was the first time I went in the 3s yeah. was at yeah. that time. And I can relate to about any drag racer because I started out with real slow cars that I built myself. And we pretty well always built our own cars because that's the only way I could afford to race is, and to race the things that I wanted to race. And I never missed a step. You know, I didn't jump in and with a five-second car and graduate to a three-second car. You know, yeah. I worked my way there the whole way. About 10 years ago or so, I, I built a brand-new car for a local series, blown big-box Chevrolet-powered car. Raced it two outings, had a customer come to me, asked me about building him a chassis. At the time, I said, you know, man, you really need a nicer car than what I can build. And I was like, go see this guy, go see that guy, talk to him about a chassis. Sold the Camaro. Yeah. And I'd always told myself that if I ever got bored with drag racing, I wanted to race a sprint car. And I bought a 410 sprint car and went non-wing sprint car racing for about 10 years, much to the delight of everybody that knows me. You know, they, they're like, he's lost his mind. Oh, when one I'm, thing you had mentioned when we were just talking a little bit ago, was a neat, unique thing that you actually got to race with your, I did. your dad. I did. It was an amazing experience. Um, I didn't grow up around my father because he and my mom divorced when I was young, and they always lived, we always lived in different cities, and he's always been a racer, never a drag racer. He <laughs> road raced and sprint car raced and sprint car raced in the 70s and then road raced up until he quit. Um, when I bought a sprint car, it was like I got that soccer dad that everybody else had. He was like, oh boy, oh boy, a sprint car, sprint car. And I was like, where were you the rest of my life? <laughs> you know, because you know, if I yeah. needed something for the sprint car, he was like, well, then just get it. You know, I'm like, well, I can't afford it this week, dad. I'm gonna have to make a little bit of money. He's like, here's the credit card, order that. We need it. But we had a great time racing with my dad. You know, I. I doing all of the kind of research and looking around the Louisville area to find out, you know, what shop was different, why. The most unique thing about yours is that there's not a lot of information out there. When I say you have a web page, <laughs> you have a web page. And, you know, there's some, some stuff on, on the social media where I can find that you've done some things. I can see some pictures of you involved in some racing. Nice. It's like the, almost like the philosophy of your shop right here. It's Old school. It's it is. It's, it is very old school. It is come down to the shop, hang out, talk me on the phone, come down in person, talk to the guys sitting here, see the guy that's, you know, the cars that are in the parking lot. I've had a lot of people inquire about, you know, well, what about doing online sales? I don't want to do online sales. I want my customers to come down here. I want them to come in the store. It's what I want to do, and it's the way I want to do it. I'm very fortunate to get to do it the way I want to do it. My guys that work for me, and that's not even fair, that work with me. That's fantastic. You know, you know, we're a family. I laugh and you tell people we're like the land of misfit toys. You know, we all make our own family down here, you know, and everybody's become a family. When yeah. you were talking, when you showed us back that uh, the sign and, mm -hmm. and the benefit they did for you, this shop here is bringing that, hey, let's all get together kind of moment. Talk a little bit about what happened. Sick you know, my PSA, if you're old and you feel bad, go to the doctor. I had some pretty serious heart problems, and because I ignored them so long, I darn near croaked out. I had no insurance because 
small business, very, you know, yeah. not cost effective yeah. and, you know, rolling the dice. And, you know, they obviously did, you know, I made it through it. Several good friends of mine put together a benefit car show and they had over 500 registered cars. Wow. <clears throat> and a car show that went from nothing to happening in two weeks, four miles each direction worth of traffic jam. My customers, I like to think I take good care of them, but they take good care of me. That's and, great. you know, they're very, very loyal to me. It's just unbelievable how good my customers as a whole have been to me forever. What kind of advice would you give anybody that's looking to want to get into racing? What would you, how would you help them out with that? Just do it. Um, don't talk about it. Don't be embarrassed to ask somebody for help. Nobody woke up and knew how to do any of this. You know, I sure didn't. And I got a lot of help along the way, you know, and I learn something new all the time. You know, I've done this every day for the majority of my life, and I still learn things every day. You know, but if you want to race or you want to play with cars, you want to build cars, don't be scared to try it. You know, get out there, get in the garage, go to the racetrack. You know, if you want something, try to do it. Good point. Last thing I want to ask you, and finish the statement for me. My life without cars would be what? Oh, God. You know, non-existent. I mean, just non-existent. You know, the, I am as much car guy as you could possibly get. Great. Drew, I wanted to thank you very much for no, taking the time to, to have, have you. Guys you, here. Have you know, I mean, to show us around, uh, take us around. And I know Josh was wanting to talk to some of the people in the back uh, and, and get some, some more of the, that, that, that their side of what it takes to build some of these cars. And again, I really appreciate you letting us come in sure, and, and sure. look around. And I've had a great time here, so cool, thanks again. Cool. Well, I'm glad to have you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, y'all. Our passion for protecting vehicles started in 1934, and we've been pushing the limits of performance ever since. We innovate with the times and have the right filters to fit your needs. Fram for the road ahead. So I was told that you are the guy to talk to back here because you uh, may have some stories. About. <laughs> well, it depends on what story you're talking about. <laughs> See, I, fi I figured I'd put you on the spot already. So, I, I mean, how did you come to work here at Street and Strap? I actually had a shop back there for a while. Okay. Me and a buddy of mine, and uh, started going through a divorce and sure. sold my part to them and kind of walked away from it so I wouldn't drag him through it. And then yeah. Drew just happened to call me one day and said, Man, I got a car I need to work on. Worked on. Yeah. I said, yeah, sure, I'll come up and do it. And then one car landed into another, into another, into another. And I finally said, well, you want to drag them back in here again? I'll come up here and work on them. And great. this is, yeah. we're back to this again. And because he'd, he'd quit actually doing this kind of stuff for a while. Okay. And then slowly got back into it with me helping him. And then we've had a couple guys here or there come in and help. How did you get into cars to begin with? My dad. Okay. Yeah. My dad drag raced back in the 60s and early 70s. No kidding. What did he run? Him and another guy had a 60, 66 Chevelle, had a small block in it. Really? Yep. Actually, he was doing it before I was born. I was born in 68, and they stopped. It was probably three or four years old, but he always always worked on cars in the garage and yeah. had buddies and stuff, brought the cars over and just kind of brought up around the hot rod world. And just have always stayed in it? Yeah. Are there other types of racing that you've been around, worked in, et cetera? I went to, a sprint, I went to a one sprint, race, sprint car race with him, but, okay. you know, Watched a few roundy round stuff here and there. I just don't. Dr drag racing's it. Yep. Yep. I've always Light liked. goes green, go down the track, yep. done. Yep. So you still race the Vega then? Yeah. Yeah. How much do you travel for the racing for that? Once a month. I'll go out. Okay. It's, wow. I've been up to some southern Indiana stuff. Man, a lot of it's in Kentucky, and I've been to Hill Care up in uh, Zeno, Ohio. I mean, I know you mentioned wiring. What got you into that? What, what do you like about wiring? Just laying it out nice and neat and make sure it's all perfect and hidden and you know I don't I just when I first started helping him first couple electric fans he had me wire yeah I was like I, I'm scared to death of wiring he goes you'll be all right and he drew me a wiring diagram and it involved from wiring fans to fuel pumps to complete cars we had a 65 64 Tempest and a 65 GTO in here at the same time. Both of them got complete wiring harnesses. And that's, I said, who's gonna wire them cars? He goes, 
you? I was like, uh, I don't know about that. He goes, you'll be all right. I was nervous wrecked first couple, but now I just dive right into them. And no problem. No problem. What's been a job that you've had to do? Um, on, and if you can remember the car, that's great. Where you're like, this one's going to beat me. No. Never? No. Never had one like that? No. That's uh, awesome. I don't let them beat me. You're going to be... I might get mad and walk off and stomp and kick and cuss and <laughs> walk away from it for a minute, but you know, you just got every now and then you got to walk away from it and then come back and then it usually just goes boop, right where it, it falls right into place. Yeah. yeah, you get aggravated, you just got to walk away. Is the Vega the dream car? I've always liked those little cars. It ain't my dream car, but I've always liked those little Vegas. If you've got a car that you could pick to run, what would it be? 66, 67 Chevy 2. Makes sense. That's my favorite car. Why do you like it so much? Is there a story it's, to it? No, it's just something about that little box body Chevy 2 I've always liked. I've had, I've had a 62, I've had a 63, I've had a, oh shit, I've had a 68, uh, I've had a 73, I've had a 76, but I've never had a 66 or a 67. So all of the, you've had all, all of the All the way ones, around. They're except just, the ones you want. Yeah, that's because they're just outrageous. What's the favorite engine then? I, I don't know. I'm real. I'm fond of the small block Chevy. To be honest okay. with you, and the small and the small block Ford. But yeah, you can find them everywhere. Yeah. Cheap, easy horsepower. Yeah, I love it. And the big blocks are just, well, I mean, big and heavy. <laughs> a lot easier with the small block. And that's like they tear up easier than a small block. <laughs> you may be right on that one. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. No problem. Enjoyed it's been it. a pleasure. Learned a lot. We will talk to you guys soon. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Well, Drew, I wanted to thank you for letting us no stop by today and really get to see a little bit of your shop and what you do here. And it was, uh... Yeah, I really appreciate it. I mean, especially someone that kind of came and started in the performance industry, seeing what you've got here. I mean, it brings back two memories of my dad's street rods and going into speed shops when I was younger. And it... Uh, yeah, really, really brings back a lot of great memories. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I, it just brought back a lot of good memories. So yes. thanks, thanks again, and wish you the best of luck. Thank thanks. you. Thanks.